welcome to Tryon Palace Live. I'm Allison Rhodes Murphy, Director of Collections and Exhibits here at Tryon Palace. And today we're going to look at the Duffy Gallery and the Stories and Fabric Exhibit. You can post questions in the comments section and we'll try to answer those the best we can at the end of this, this um, video. So come on down to Halton Pavilion and we're going to go inside the gallery. Let's get started. chartered in 1983 and grew to about 140 members. They are a large organization that feels like they are a small group of friends. Um, they offer in-house and professional workshops to members. They encourage members through stitch and chats, blocks of the month activities, challenge quilts, and day of sharing activities and exhibits like you see here. So before we start walking around and looking at the different quilts, in the room. Let's talk about what is a quilt. A quilt is a multi-layered textile. You have a quilt top, which can be pieced, or it can be a whole cloth. You have a bottom piece of fabric, and then you have uh, the middle section, which is usually a stuffing or a batting. And the quilting is the actual the stitches that pull all those layers together into a single textile. And there you have a quilt. So what are quilts used for? Quilts have primarily been used for warmth, historically. Uh, they were a way to reduce waste using scraps of fabric or to recycle worn out textiles and give them a new life. Um, they could also have been used in the past as a specialty fancier quilt to indicate status or wealth and also for women to show off their sewing skills, which was a very important skill to have uh, in the past. Today, quilts are still used as bed coverings but they're also used as wall hangings, uh, home decor, and as art. Quilting today is an art form in itself that challenges artists to find new color combinations and patterns and fabrics uh, and to put them together in, in new and exciting ways um, to express themselves artistically. So um, I was going to mention too, um, if you haven't been yet to the Pepsi Family Center, uh, the Pepsi uh, Portal to History in the North Carolina History Center, when we reopen, we hope you'll come and join us there. There is a quilting um, activity for families where it's all digital and all um, through computers, but you can actually design and put together your quilt blocks, and then the computer pulls it together into a large quilt for you. And so you can do that as an activity. So as we go around the room, um, you'll notice that we've kind of grouped the quilts by categories. Um, you'll have florals, animals, sea, block patterns, holiday, etc. So there's some kind of rhyme or reason to it all. There are actually hundreds and hundreds of patterns. There's block patterns, there's pictorial patterns, and there's variations on patterns. Some patterns have multiple names to them. Um, it really is an endless opportunity for creativity, especially when you start pulling in new color combinations, new fabrics, new trends, things like that. Um, and there are lots of different construction methods with quilts. You can do patchwork pieces, appliques, paper piecing, there's reverse applique, you can have whole cloth quilting, trapunto, embellishments, embroidery. Again, there are just endless options of things that you can do with fabric uh, to create your own masterpiece. 
So as we look through the exhibit today, you can kind of um, you know, look at the different techniques you see, the different um, materials you see, the um, different ways they were constructed, the different patterns. You're going to see a lot of different things going on here. There are actually uh, 60 exhibits in, the, in this exhibit, so there's not really time for me to talk about each one individually. Um, so we discussed what you would probably rather do instead of having me just pick six to talk about, is to actually walk around the room and let you see these quilts for yourself. Uh, so that's what we think we're gonna do. So let me just point out a couple of quick things here. Um, this is where we were talking about the quilting design. So the, the quilting part itself actually makes part of the design on this quilt. Um, sometimes the quilting is actually around the individual pieces of fabric, such as the one next here. You have blocks, but then you have um, quilting. Then there's also, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a quilting pattern that runs through here kind of in a leaf pattern behind it. We'll find another one later, I'll show that to you. Um, so you can see individual pieces of fabric have been put together to pull the leaves and an image of the flowers together on that one. And you can see that the fabric itself, the tone is graded from light to dark. So again, you have that textured look to it. It's not nice, it's not flat. If we come back to this one, we can talk about what we're talking about, applique. So this is a separate piece of fabric that has been placed and stitched down. I'm gonna show you this one on the top up here. This is an example of, of paper piecing. So you see how sharp and precise all of these, these pieces are, are put together. They are actual paper, it's almost it's a paper pattern, almost uh, not a stencil, but it's a pattern. And you have to actually use those individual pattern pieces to keep it nice and sharp, those nice crisp edges there. If you just kind of freehanded that, uh, you would not have that striking um, result. And then over here, I'm going to point out um, an example of embellishments. Um, this is, I guess, a, a a variation on a traditional block. So it's one fabric is the block, but then we've spilled out to do an applique, and then you can see the embellishments um, in, in several spaces around it. So now we'll just go around the room, and as um, I see something I wanna make sure we point out, we'll do that. Um, or if there are any questions that come along that we need to answer as we go, we'll do that. And I will try and go slow enough that I won't make you seasick moving around the room. So I'm going to go in on one of these so you can see the stitching there, the quilting. Got a traditional block, but it's kind of skewed. This is a really large one. I can't get it all in the camera. I think in this one you can probably see the quilting pattern itself is this leaf right there. And this one's called Spring Flurry, but you see, so it's, um, it's almost like an impressionist painting. You have the individual pieces in here and they're put together to create flowers. All right, so this is another example of an applique. So all of these pieces are individual cut and then stitched down on top. 
you have one here, one flower that is, that is not stitched down all the way, and then your quilting is radiating out. And here is an example of a quilt with embroidery. So all of this is stitched, and then you just have your basic cross stitching. All right, so we're gonna go this way. So we're still in our floral theme here. Uh, this is actually a tulip pattern, but it is a, a more of a, a, a block print. I mean, I'm sorry, a block pattern. It's a tulip pattern, but you can, you, I think you can see the tulips in there created out of lots and lots of little pieces of fabric. Here I can come in close so you can see how those are done. Sorry, is that too fast? And again, you can, I think you can see in the lighter fabrics, the quilting stitch behind it are these wavy lines. This one is very large, definitely a bed covering. Um, and this one has both your traditional blocks, so you can see. So we have lots of little pieces here. So if you just look at this one, here is your block right there. But within that block, you have nine blocks. But even within that nine block, you have one, two, three, four, five pieces of fabric. So that block is created first, and you create your blocks, and then you create this big block, and then you create lots of panels of blocks, and then you have to put all of the larger blocks into the big, to the big quilt. This one also has examples of applique in it. So this is a piece that is stitched down on top the leaves here, and the stem. And so this is still part of our floral theme because you can see the flowers in there, very large scale, and has floral trim. Here's a different pattern, kind of a take on a, on a star. Um, this one you can see very well the quilting in the background, the quilting stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna move out of florals and over to animals, go to fauna. So this one is, is actually a memory quilt for the, for the quilter who made this one. Um, as she traveled, she collected fabrics and then put them together to remind her of her trip. So you can see lots of, lots of Lots of images to help her always remember her trip. So that's a, um, one of the favorite things to do with, with, for people with quilts is um, they are, they're significant to them and their life memories and um, people, people, they remember who they quilted with and um, why they quilted it. All right, so here I wanted to point out, so you have, it's a printed piece of fabric is one of the, the the, the alternating squares, and then the other is the actual patchwork pattern. And you can see a nice quilting pattern in here um, with, with the Vs. But I wanted to show you here, I've actually stitched around the bird to kind of pop it out a little bit and quilt it around the bird with um, some metallic thread. All right, so we're gonna move around. Are we doing okay, Rob? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so this one is, is very interesting because it's only two fabrics. So it's, you have a ground fabric and then you have your fabric layered on top. So this is actually multiple layers. So you have your backing, your batting, here's your, your top, and then you have these pieces that are kind of put on top. It's almost like a negative. So you can see to make the elephant's head here, you have one, two, three, four and then they've cut out the pieces to let the ground fabric come through there kind of like a stencil and that one might have a little bit of extra padding in it a little bit all right i'm gonna move around here 
So here is another example of using a printed fabric to create your scene, um, but then highlighting different things with, with um, extra stitching and such. So I'll come in a little closer, and again, you can see that uh, we have extra stitching around the antlers and around the deer. And then here is your, I don't know if you can see it here, maybe here, your decorative all over quilting stitch is this wave. But they've gone to the trouble of alternating the quilting stitch. So within the frame of the, the buck here, you have this wavy, but here between the two, you have a leaf quilting pattern. Can you see that? And so that's kind of, even on the border, I can show you, we have two other quilting patterns. So right here, there's kind of a, a spriggy leaf, and then this is more like a cloud swirly quilting pattern right there. Okay. This one, I feel like I'm looking out a window. <laughs> so again, you have a, a printed image and then quilting on top. So all of these are individual little pieces of fabric that are put together into strips and then are over the actual image behind it uh, to keep create kind of a lattice that you're looking through. And then you have the decorative embroidery around the frame. Yes. This one? Hadley likes that one. Okay, great. It has a lot of nice elements to it. This one? This one? Okay. This one? Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to this one. I don't know if I can get my, my, my tripod is a little bit long to get down close to it. But so this is a dragonfly. <clears throat> this one has a lot of, um, a lot of, construction things going on here. So you have pieced and appliqued dragonflies onto the ground fabric. You have embellishments. You can see the, the glittery things. Um, there is a background. You have beading around the edge. We have our wing that just kind of pops out there for a surprise. But there's also, I don't know if you can see this, this is stitching. Um, to just enhance that um, light into dark. Okay. And up here, this is Feather Dancer. And so you've kind of got a traditional patchwork kind of star in the center. And then you have your pieced feathers. You can see those are individual pieces of fabric. And then the applique. And then the background stitching adds to it, the quilting pattern adds to the overall piece. All right, this one you can see the background quilting pattern very well. Great elephant made out of the kaleidoscope elephant. <laughs> Many colors and lots of little pieces. Okay. I'm sure we have lots of people at home going, oh, I want that. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, I think animals are always popular motifs, especially dogs. And maybe there's some cat people out there. Last year we had a cat quilt. So you can see these are appliqued. They're actually pieces of felt. And here's your pieced, and there's your squares. And I think if you can see, there are colors. They they change. Um, there the the seam here shows your traditional changing of your squares fabric. All right. This one's fun with a lot of applique. Then you have the decorative quilting on the llama itself, which creates the illusion of, of hair. Um, but lots of applique pieces on top. And then you have two different quilting patterns between the background and the border. Yeah. Yes. 
Zanetta says, you mentioned last year we had a cat, well. Oh, I meant two years ago. Come back every year. Yeah, okay, so every two years we host a, an exhibit from the Twin Rivers Cultures Guild every two years. So that was two years ago, so yes. So we hope, if they are willing, that they will come back again in 2021. No, 22, 22, I'm getting my years mixed up. All right, this one again, there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, notice how the quilting pattern itself looks like water. So adds to adds to the total piece. You have a lot of applique. These are actually individual pieces. There's seashells and flowers that the artist cut out um, and then assembled together to create the seahorse. That's a lot of pieces. A lot of pieces. Um, I also wanted to point out the quilting pattern. So you have um, for here, you see the, the, the greenery, but then look here. She continued the outline of the um, leaf down into the, the backing fabric, the ground fabric. And so you even have some repeated designs of the starfish and the jellyfish there. Hey, Alice, yes. people really like the llamas. Do they like the llamas? <laughs> They're cute. They are cute. All right, so we are, if I didn't say so already, we're in our sea motif area here. Um, and I just think it's really interesting how you can kind of even take the same topic and do so many different things with it. Um, down here, you can see this one. We're using, uh, she was using yo-yos, uh, which is this little pucker thing here. Um, um, and just, just, it's really fun. And then you have some rick rack. And then up here we have a, this turtle is made out of, a, it's a pattern fabric to give it texture and the same thing with the shell, you've got that texture going on. But then look at the seaweed, it's, it's fringy there. It's actually, um, it's three dimensional, it's actually popping off. And then the quilting um, stitches itself has those nice waves behind it. Ooh, sorry, I'm kind of wobbly there trying to get back. Um, so here's another um, take on sea life. And so they're all very different. They're all unique. Leslie said the sea turtles are her favorite. Ah. <laughs> they're all unique and they're, all, they're, they're great. They all have wonderful qualities to them. Um, here is definitely um, examples of some novelty ones, which are fun. Um, but again, you have um, materials which are not tacked down. I mean, they're tacked down, but they, they pop off of the, the page here to give it texture. You have some embellishments. Um, and then again, you can see here multiple types of quilting going on to give you the image of sand, sea, air. And then this is a, another little example of lots of embellishments and just kind of popping off of the, the quilt there to give it lots of texture and interest. And this particular one, this is using trapunto. Um, if you're not familiar with trapunto, it's where it's actually padded out. You, you can see the fabric is literally popping out. Um, it's filled with batting um, to give it again, that three dimensional look to it. So uh, if we pull back here, you can see a seahorse hiding in the seagrass. And then if we get closer, sorry, was that too fast? Um, you can see these are all individual little pieces. And then again, the quilting pattern in the background adds to the overall impact of the piece. All right. So here we're looking through a window. So we have, what we have some different things going on here. We have applique, lots of applique. Um, and then you have your quilting pattern creating bricks, quilting pattern creating ocean. And this is truly a pictorial quilt. Okay. So we're still sticking with C, but we're gonna go from pictorial to block patterns. So this is storm at sea. Um, so we're more traditional patchwork quilts here with your block patterns. Um, I think this was a challenge quilt uh, for the guild at one time. 
Uh, let's see, I'm gonna read it for you. It says, each member was given a half yard of blue fabric for the center of the block. The directions were to use your favorite block in a quilt no bigger than 36 by 36. So that definitely reminds us of the C. Pretty impressive. All right, so now we're gonna move into some novelty quilts, some bright colors. Um, this is hole in the wall. Also, I've heard hole in the barn door, lots of different terms for this, this um, pattern. Lots of bright colors, but you can see you have a large block made up of pieces and then the blocks are alternated around really pretty fabrics all right so i'm going to back up here for this one this one i think is called yo-yoville and so we can get this one's just fun it has a borders lots of applique again so you have your ground fabric with appliques of your houses and trees and flowers um, and then in the center you see you have your alternating blocks of of fabric and then lots and lots of colorful yo-yos sewn in there all right this one i want to start way back here Sure, everybody's heard the little bad joke about the Surratt knew a lot about dots. We talk about the Impressionist paintings who from far back, you could see what it was, but then the closer you got, you realized it was just thousands and thousands and thousands of dots. And so this is kind of on that principle, but in fabric. So let's go closer. I can't get any lower because of my tripod, I'm sorry. So lots and lots of pieces, small pieces, put together in an arrangement that creates a picture. Oh, Rob's gonna try and shorten my tripod here, thank you. All right, let's see if we can. Oh. All right, but hang on, okay, sorry. Moving too fast, there we go, is that a little better? And again, those quilting stitches are probably popping out new to, now too to help with pulling that image together. Okay. All right. This one is called a lasagna quilt. I guess you can probably understand why with all those layers, like a lasagna. Um, I think the artist called this one the princess and the pea. Or, so it could also be stacks and stacks of mattresses or blankets. <laughs> so you have lots of strips of fabric that are sewn together here. And you have an overall, overall pattern of swirls. And then there's little flower stitches in here. And leaves. So these are our, I guess I didn't say when we went over to Yo-Yoville. These are more not novelty quilt. Okay. Okay, this one, I'll just again point out how the, the quilting stitches themselves add a lot to pull the picture together. You can actually see the wind, um, but it also has a lot, of, um, a lot of different kind of stitching going on, but you see those gusts of wind within the actual quilting stitches. You have um, lace that has been appliqued on here. There are embellishments. This one is called Blizzard. And aren't we glad we are not in a blizzard right now? But it looks very inviting. All right. So now we're gonna move into our block quilt section with some of the more traditional patterns and variations on patterns. Um, this one is actually, the title of this one is called uh, Square Curve, Square Curves. 
And so you can kind of see how you're trying to make circles <laughs> with squares. Uh, if we go in close, you can see that it's actually, um, at, at its core is a log cabin block and they're in the center, which is basically just lots of rectangles that are put together to, to make a square. But it's been arranged in a way to create these visual circles. And the artist chose quilting stitches in a circular pattern to kind of, again, pull in that, that theme. Right. So this one we have the traditional interlocking squares and then we've added in some embellishments and appliques. And then I want you to notice that the, the quilting patterns change. So in the center block here, we have large circles that are the quilting, pat uh, quilting pattern. Then we move to the side, the next section over, and we have kind of this V-shaped quilting pattern. Then we go to kind of this braided, twisted pattern. Then you have these pinwheel quilted pattern. You have your triangle borders, and then we have quilting and diagonals on the side. And this actually, if I understand cor correctly, was a round robin quilt from the guild where you work on a piece and you send it to the next person. Um, and the person that submitted this, she created the center and then passed it out for members to keep adding on to. So um, a great community project there. And they can all be really excited about what they created. All right move around here. So two very different quilts here. We'll start down here at the bottom. So the quilter for this one um, had fabrics in three inch strips. So this was a, a fabric exchange. And so this is what she created with the, the um, what she got from that fabric exchange, which is these wonderful, looks like stair steps if you look at it correctly. Depending on how you look at it, it's either rings or it's stair steps. Um, don't know what you see on the camera there, but you can look at them either way. Um, but lots of piecing. I'll just pull in here. So you can see how that's put together. Okay. Am I moving too fast with the camera? Or are we doing okay? Or am I going too slow? <laughs> All right. And this one up here, this is called Aussie Spirit. Um, the artist said this, the fabrics reminded her of Australia. And so she set to work trying to find other complementary fabrics. So you have your individual pieces creating your border, lots of little rectangles here. And you have the pieced strips going through. And then you have larger kind of free form pieces. And then again, look at how the, um, the quilting stitches really just add to the texture and the movement as your eye moves around the piece. Okay. All right. So this one is called Amish Sunset. This is a traditional pattern. And um, for true Amish quilts, there are approved color combinations, um, but there are many versions of Amish quilts and um, ways that they can be made your own. You can see all the different piecing going on in here and how the stripes are created with the alternating colors. It's very dramatic. All right. All right, this one is called Lotus, 
and probably the first thing you notice is the star in the center. I, I have to share personally, my mother-in-law is a quilter. She's made one star quilt in her life and she says, never again, <laughs> because it was so difficult. Um, so she was pretty impressed with this one. Um, so we have the, the star in the center and you can see how they're made of diamond pieces. You see the diamonds. But then look at the quilting pattern on top. So even though this is a diamond, there is an oval here as they cut in, it, then it creates oval leaf. And then over on the side here, we have a different background quilting pattern and then appliques. Sorry, there's a bench behind me I'm trying not to run into. All right. This one is windmills on my mind, and you can see the windmill pattern in there, can't you? Do you see? Uh, where's my, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what I'm focusing on here. There we go. So it's kind of a pinwheel made out of, you know, you've got your four, four pieces of color, and then you've got your your triangles in the corner, and then they are put into larger blocks and pieced together. And you can see again how our quilting pattern changes here on the edges. We have, it looks almost like a little paisley in there, um, and, but then you have quilting that is outlining the actual pieces of fabric. And, and creating. So you can see that this rectangle goes all the way up into here and this piece is laid on top. Okay. All right, let's spin around over here. We have a few more to share. I'll get way back for this one. Some nice pops of color, very nice pops of color. So this one, the artist talked about um, how they ended up with just, you know, all quilters end up with buckets of scraps and you have all these strips. And so they make good use of their strips. So you can see all of these are nice long pieces and then creating blocks out of the pieces and then take the blocks to make a bigger block and then the bigger blocks to make a bigger one. Then you have on the side, you have individual pieces the border and then you have this lovely little swirly thing as the background stitching for the quilting of the overall piece. Okay. This one is called Carpenter Star Red, Red Sky, excuse me. And so you have that star that's just kind of layered moving out. And then you have your border of the pieced rectangles and square corners. And a little wave is the quilting pattern behind it all. Okay. And this one is Cammie's hearts. So can you see the hearts in there? You see the heart motif right here. I'm sure you see that, right? This one also has embellishments. Every now and then you have little, little jewels that pop out from here and there. Um, but then also the heart motif is taken into the actual quilting. Can you see the hearts in the quilting pattern itself? Um, and then the fabric, the background fabric is also little tiny hearts. So all those elements are pulled together and a really nice theme. It's a really pretty piece. Okay. Gonna move around the room here a little bit. Sorry, I'm trying not to move the camera too much so we don't get seasick. And this is a drunkard's path, um, which is a 
uh, a tr that is the name of a quilt. If you, if you <laughs> don't, don't know, um, not a quilter, it is a, an actual traditional pattern. Um, it's been around for a while. And so you see it's a combination of squares and circles and creating that circle. And so the um, quilter chose for the quilting stitching to be circles. See that? And here I'll point out this is interesting too for the, the trim. It's like a newsprint fabric. All right, so now we're gonna move into our winter holiday. This is a, everyone loves their cardinals, red birds. It's what my grandmother always called them though, red birds. And so it's a traditional block style. And again, look at the background quilting. very nice to bring out for the winter and the holidays. Here we have two winter scenes, um, but made very differently. So the bottom one we have, it's, and you've got the quilted ground fabric, creating the look of snow coming from the sky. You have embroidery, you have kind of trapunto here. They're kind of popping out a little bit. Um, you've got embellishments. And then this is flying geese, which is the triangles uh, going around it. Um, it's pretty, pretty wall hanging. And then here, this one, this is, oh, I guess I should have said, the one at the bottom was, it does snow in New Bern. Occasionally it snows in New Bern, doesn't it? And then this one is quiet night. And you can see, uh, you still have the quilting, the applique of the, the trees, the snow-covered trees, there's embellishments here, more appliques, and then you have this folded and um, seamed and rumpled up fabric, again, to give it texture and, and really pull it out of the fabric and make it three-dimensional. Okay, so since we're talking about the winter holidays, this is actually dreidel delight. And you can see there's actually a little dreidel hanging at the bottom down here. So this is a combination of, you have, um, you have there's your square. So we have applique and you have the stitching and this is, it has a metallic thread stitching. And so it's a four panels, four squares. Um, you can see they really emphasize the diagonals there with the quilting. And then you, on the side here, you have the specialty fabric with again, the, the metallic thread to quilt around it. All right, got a couple more. So we have a nativity. Um, this is a lot of applique to create the pictorial quilt. So you actually have pieces of fabric that are creating the um, people and the animals. Um, the buildings are appliqued and um, they've created with fabric strips, almost like you're looking through a stain, it's like a stained glass window. Um, and then you have the star printed fabric around the sides. Come in close so you can see some of the detail there. And you have a little embellishment, the eyes are little beads. And this one down here is called Christmas Charms. Uh, the artist says she had created, collected lots and lots of different Christmas print fabrics over the years. And they were having a five inch Christmas block exchange. And so she used some of her fabrics, some from the block exchange and just pulled them all together and made this really fun holiday quilt. So just lots of fun with fabric. So again, you can be as creative as you want with, you know, you don't, you don't have to have alternating colors or alternating patterns. It's 
sometimes it's just fun to put them out there and see how they come together. It's, it gives your eyes a treat. All right, I have one right around here. Here is O Christmas tree. And so, again, the Christmas tree is made of lots of little pieces of fabric and an applique and um, embellishments on top of that. And then you have the patterned quilting behind. Can you see? Okay. Did we miss the two at the front? Did we, I think, I think we might have missed just a couple up here. We're almost done. And actually, I think we missed this one. Yeah, let's do this one first. Sorry, was that too fast? This is looking up to. Um, this is lots of pieces of fabric. Um, I'm gonna come in close on this here, so you can see. And lots of, you know, you have um, lots of stitching to help you figure out leaves from trees. There is some embellishment with some metallic thread in here, um, but that that background stitch, you know, again gives a lot of texture, and you can tell you're looking up into the trees there. Okay, and then. So this one, I guess we could call a whole, whole cloth top with an applique. The applique is actually a, a, a piece of um, vintage lace. I think it's a lace tablecloth um, that the, the artist found and quilted to the top um, of her quilt top. So uh, it's really beautiful. So you have, you've got this, you know, been able to recycle something that perhaps people don't use anymore and turn it into this lovely wall hanging. Um, you've got the star in the center with the quilting. And then I think this is maybe kind of a trapunto in here. They're puffed up. And even the lace seems to be kind of puffed up a little bit, so they've been quilted around there. Um, and then she has continued this same uh, quilting, kind of a similar motif for the outside here. And then there's a little bit of embellishment right here on the beaded edge. So it's a wonderful way to repurpose those old linens that you don't want to throw away because they were grandma's, but what do you do with them? Well, that's beautiful. And this quilt has lots and lots of embellishments and would be considered a, a crazy quilt style. In crazy quilts, um, there are lots of odd shaped pieces of fabric and they are just put together in a not necessarily a uniform way. Uh, she has actually created um, hexagons in here, I believe. Um, and with, with her crazy quilt pieces of fabric, uh, the other um, trademark of crazy, crazy quilts is lots of embroidery, decorative embroidery. This is how you showed off your sewing skills. I am a good sewer, so I would make a good wife. Um, so you have lots of beautiful flowers here and then the decorative stitches you're showing off your stitches as you're putting the pieces together she's got lots of buttons here lots of beading um, and she's even created little three-dimensional medallions for the corners and here we have some little leaves there all right so I think we hit them all. I'm going to pass this off to Rob for a second. Question from Hadley. How do you decide to organize them? That is, <laughs> that is not an easy question to answer. 
Um, it really, um, the way we work with the guild is they give us submissions, descriptions, dimensions, and um, photographs. From Andrea, how long is the exhibit up for? Well, that's a good question. The exhibit actually ended uh, in the middle of March, and we were in the process. Um, we were, uh, I think we had another week to go when COVID came along, and uh, we had to close our doors. Um, we've actually not even been able to allow our lenders to come back to retrieve their quilts. We are hoping, getting through quilt journal team, we're really hoping that they will be willing to extend this exhibit after we reopen for a few months or even a month. Um, I can't promise that, but we are going to ask if they'd be willing to, to share their, their art with us a little bit longer. So we'll be posting that on Facebook, um, but we really can't make plans until we know from the governor if he's allowed to reopen. From Sandy, are they machined or hand sewn? Those? They're a combination. They're a combination. Uh, the majority of the quilting stitches is is machined. Um, the, um, it, it's interesting. I think if you're doing a an exhibit on antique quilts, historical quilts, it's definitely even though sewing machines came around in the 19th century, you're still it's primarily hand. But now it's an art form. There's all these great machines, and the machines allow the artist to be even more creative and do more interesting things. And so the machines actually um, help take quilting kind of to another level there. Um, but it's a little bit of everything. Maria, in what century were these made and how are they used? Okay, so all of the quilts you see here today are, uh, I believe, within the next last 10 years they've all been made. Um, and the, these are all personally owned quilts. Um, the quilters, um, the, these are from private collections. So the quilters have lent them to us just for this exhibit. Some of them display them in their house, some of them put them on their beds, hold them out for holidays, special occasions, use them as gifts. I will tell you, this Quilters Guild also makes quilts to use to, to give out to charities, hospitals, nursing homes, things like that. So um, they are very prolific. How do you go about lighting an exhibit like this? Okay, so we have to worry with all of our collections about the light output. Okay, so it is a balance between we want it to be lit enough that you can see it, but we also have to protect the object. Um, so even though these are modern quilts, and maybe in somebody's house this is sitting in full sun, as if they're a loan to us, we treat them as permanent museum collections. And so we have a maximum of what that light level can be. Uh, so generally we will set the whole exhibit and while we're setting, we're using full lights. And then we actually uh, have a team, somebody on a ladder, and the um, lights 
and screens. They're actually metal screens that go over the light bulbs, and it's somebody with a light meter down below, and they're giving levels of like, this is too bright, we need to reduce it, um, and so we have to work out the light levels. We also have to figure out, we really want the fewest lights as we can. You can end up with so many lights trying to get rid of shadows, but then somebody's turning around the corner, and all of a sudden there's a light in your eye. Um, and we don't want that, but then that kind of interrupts the, 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 the good feeling of the exhibit and um, can be very uncomfortable. So we try to just do straight lighting as best as we can and with as few light sources as we can um, and then measure those light levels. From Leslie, how is the quilt stitching done? How is the quilt stitching done? Uh, I would think it would probably be dependent on the, the different quilts. Probably every quilter does theirs differently. And I know some of these are group projects, and some of them, one person might be making the top, and then somebody else is doing the quilting part. So I don't know that I can really answer that question. That's it. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Well, I hope you have enjoyed um, looking at around the gallery here and all these amazing pieces of art, I mean, each with their own story to tell. Um, thank you for joining us next Tuesday. Um, I hope you can join Trying Palace Research Historian Lindy Cumming with a peek into the archive collection at Trying Palace, and that's next Tuesday. I think it's May 5th. Is that correct? At 10 a.m.